rolling. Oh, yeah. Three pre-rolls this week. It's 2022. Are you still dipping traditional tobacco or those white portion things? Don't do it. Actually, do it. If so, when you're 21, it's time to get with Black Buffalo. Black Buffalo is everything you love about dipping just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. They even have nicotine-free options called Zero. Head to blackbuffalo.com. Use the promo code JRVP at checkout for 25% off your first order. That's the best offer you will find. Code JRVP for 25% off your first order at Black Buffalo. Helix Sleep. It's a premium mattress brand. It's not one of those cheap ones. Provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models. That's what Anthony and I got. A mattress for big and tall sleepers. And even a mattress made just for kids. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP. With Helix, better sleep starts now. And you know what's up last. What? Athletic Greens. Fuck yeah. Free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash JRVP for a one-year supply of that sweet, sweet vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop. That's athleticgreens.com slash JRVP. So we, uh, we had three tasty pre rolls. We got two kids in a suitcase. We got an update on the butthole challenge and all the jizzy jewelry you can handle. Coming up on episode 173 of the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. Chair VP. Junior Vice President. I know some rappers who paid but broke. A lot of money, but you played your soul. You played yourself. You played the role. Mmm. I don't even need to know where that's coming from. Oh, actually, I guess I do need to ask. But I'm guessing it's our guy, uh, J.I.D. Jid. J.I.D. or Jid. Jid. I had never heard of this guy. I saw an article saying it's uh, album of the year contender. Downloaded it. Loved it. Told you. Told my brother. My brother was, he liked some songs, but wasn't like doing backflips like I was. How did you feel? No, I'm totally into it. I knew J.I.D. a little bit. There was like a couple songs uh, in his uh, discography, I guess, that were on some of my playlists. He had that song with Eminem, which was good. Uh, but this takes it to another level. It's like a whole hour of of chopping it up. I mean, he's like a real, uh, I think he's like a, a new rapper, new school rapper that appe- appeals to um, old people like us, too. I like him. I think he because he's really rapping his fucking ass off in every song. Rapping his ass off, but it's like fun too. Yeah. It's like I, people are all about Kendrick Lamar, but I'm like this is this feels like homework. I feel like I'm like going to rap school. I want to just like rock out, and Jid's great for that. So I mean, I see what you're saying. Kendrick has a few bangers on the new album. You're right. The the last few, you know, little little homework feel. Uh, but no, this is cool because it's it's fun to see. Um, I think a guy who's been around a little bit, and then it's like they reach that moment in their career where they're just like ready to release a classic. That's like how I view the Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project. Junior VP. Junior Vice President. It's like Aaron, you've you're been... getting worse at this. <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm thinking about pulling like an uh, executive decision and getting trying to get someone to record Junior Vice President and just play that every time. No. Like I thought like what if I what if I got Sharon Stone to do a sexy Junior Vice well, President? Well, that would be cool. That would be cool. But I don't know uh, but I would be too embarrassed that she would say no. That I thought maybe go to Cameo and get someone to do a sexy junior. Well, I also there. don't want to have to like coordinate pressing the button every time. Uh, but that's we an do easy that. one. You say that, and yet yeah. you still how, have to how like. Do you think rem- I feel. Yeah, like you, you have to remember. You know, I like it just pops up, and then you have to remember to say the JRVP, and then you have to hit the button. That it's sounds not, like a lot of work. It's not, it's not hard. All right, you do it's it like one gotta, week. You got to put your shoes on. You got to tie your shoes. You got to walk. You do it one week. I want to no. see Jesselnick run the board for one week. I don't have to. <laughs> okay. I'm earning you that. Might, you might want to see me go on the NFL Network and talk about what's going on that week, but I don't have to do that. I would. It's not my job. Would you? It, it, you still have never come on uh, the Around the NFL podcast or any uh, any program of mine. We never been invited. It. That's true. Never been it just invited. didn't seem like uh, the dynamics would be right. Uh, but the na- dynamic dynamics are right in this in this studio right here. Ask me, uh, Aaron. When you say junior vice president, you sound like uh, Charles Barkley's golf golf swing looks. <laughs> 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 
it's like way too hesitant and like you've never heard someone say words before but that's um, not, I that's turn not, my mic on and then I got it. Well, he he did. We did ask before the show. He fixed the WD forty on the chair. It does sound better. Uh, I think it's been great in the last few episodes. Um, I didn't notice like a big downturn this week, but uh, maybe just the the timing we need to work on a little. What's well, like you know when like a kid walks for the first time and you're like, oh my god, that's so great, and then you see him walk like a week later and you're like, this kid's not that good at walking. That's Aaron <laughs> saying, junior vice president. The rest of the things he has to say are great. But the junior vice president is like, is like, he's uh, he's at gunpoint. Sexy is not in my wheelhouse, guys. It doesn't. It's not about sexy. It's about like sounding like you've said words before. Okay. And like when you just talked just now, that was perfect. That was pretty sexy. There's something about the junior vice president that like I don't know if you think that's sexy. I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Good news for the listeners. Um, ask me why I feel entitled to tell people what hip-hop to listen to. Uh, why do you feel entitled to tell people what hip-hop to listen to? Because Kanye West said I'm one of his favorites. Was that what he said? Was that the exact thing? I know it was uh, he posted of me from th thoughts, in the, th thoughts and Prayers. I almost said Thoughts in the Maternity Ward. Thoughts and Prayers, and yeah. then said one of my favorites? Yes. He had... Kanye West, for listeners um, who aren't on uh, Instagram or social media or, or whatnot, um, not only said that you were one of his favorites in a long list, uh, which we'll get into on Instagram, which I believe he's deleted since. He's, he's posted like at least 30 Instagram posts since then, so it's a little confusing to me. But I believe he, he deleted the original one for some reason since. But then after that, he actually put one up just of you, just of the cover of Thoughts and Prayers. Forget about all of his other favorites, which he had listed previously, and he just put, yeah, your fa your uh, cover in one of my favorites. That's yeah. pretty good. It was great. I mean, I'll walk you through my experience of it. Like, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm in bed. I slept in, and this was Saturday morning, I think, or maybe Sunday morning. And I'm a Sunday morning and I, I wake up and Liz like jumps into bed and is like, Anthony, Anthony. And I my first my first reaction is it's another 9-11. <laughs> it reminded me just of when I woke up the morning of 9-11 to my girlfriend at the time telling me that we were under attack. Yeah, we were in the same apartment. And I look up and I, no, this was in... Uh, Am I crazy? I was crazy. in LA. Okay. You were in LA. I had gone back to New Orleans to visit. I was in the And I was about to fly shit. home yeah. that day that 9-11 happened. I was delayed a couple little bit. And when I came back, we were in the house on Hayworth with Chris. With You guys moved in while I was out of town. Um, but it, I see she's smiling and she's holding her phone like she's been like looking at it and she's like, Kanye West is, is talking about you on Instagram. And... My first thought is like, cause I'm like wiping sleep out of my eyes. I'm like, okay, it's not a terrorist attack. Her smile on her face, like she said, it sounds like it's good. But I'm like, Kanye is talking about me? Like, why? And I thought, he found out about me and Kim. <laughs> <laughs> he found out about me and Kim and he's pissed about it. And, but the, the smile on, on her face, I'm like, okay, this is going to be okay. <laughs> but I still kind of don't believe it. I'm still asleep enough that I'm like, I don't, I don't know what she's talking about, but I don't get it. And then I pick up my phone off the side of the bed and there's like a million texts from all my friends. Like people I haven't heard from in years are like, Kanye's talking about you. And they're all talking about the first post that was, I think he just said uh, he loves comedy, which is why he could, he, he always hated Pete Davidson. And lists, I think his favorite comics were, it's like, it's like it's reciting, not, it's it, like reciting pie for me. It's like Kanye says uh, his favorite comics are him, Mitch Hedberg, me, and then I think Elon Musk. I think Musk made the cut. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I didn't realize that's who he was referring to, Pete Davidson, when he calls, uh, he, he says, I love funny people. And this is a, a few uh, sentences in, although there's no punctuation, so it's hard to tell. Uh, I, I love funny people. I think that's one of the reasons me and Skeet could have never been friends. Skeet must be Pete Davidson. Comedically, you didn't know that? I don't know that. <laughs> Comedically, some of my favorites are me, me being Kanye West. Uh, Mitch Hedberg, Anthony Jeselnik, and then it's a long list. Uh, Louis C.K., Jared Carmichael, D. Ray, J.P. Smooth. Not J.B. Smooth. Not J.B. Smooth, but J.P. Smooth. Uh, Mace, I think the rapper. Elon Musk, 50. 50 mm -hmm. Cent gets in there. Great, great comic mind. Uh, and it goes on from there, including some big uh, names like Chris Rock, Larry David, and Kevin Hart, in parentheses, in Jumanji. Yeah, that would have been, that would, I mean, a, gr a great diss saying Kevin Hart in Jumanji is really funny. A lot of comments were like, why didn't he say Aziz? I know they were boys back in the day. I, that was, that was cool, but not like great. Like if he hadn't done the post that was just my face and saying one of my favorites, I wouldn't have been as enthused. Uh, but I was But psyched. I assumed it was in like a list order of ranking because uh, Kevin Hart and Jumanji, 
is at the end. Although then he says, of course, King David, Dave Chappelle. Like, Dave Chappelle got his own little love, but it felt like he was saying some of my favorites. Obviously, number one is Kanye. Brilliant uh, comedic mind. So me, that's first. Mitch Hedberg, um, you know, no longer with us, but he was what? second. <laughs> <laughs> he was second and then you were third so I thought that was a lot of respect it was amazing and being put next to Mitch Hedberg is cool um, I, I loved uh, I loved all of that but yeah seeing the other one of just my face was awesome but it was also like what do I do with this I just kind of answered texts from friends it was like oh yeah this is cool one of my friends texted me was like you're gonna have 20 minutes on stage about this I was like how would I do that what would I do what would I th- hey, Kanye talked about me on Instagram no one gives a fuck and like I went to go look at it and enjoy it I like my, my social media team was like, was up way ahead of it. And were like emailed me earlier and said, Kanye posted about you. You should put it in your stories. If you should, you need to comment on the post because he didn't tag you. So if you want to get new followers and stuff to uh, <laughs> make a comment. And so I'm, I sat there for 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe trying to think of what the comment, I thought about be, being kind of a dick about it. Like I thought about just saying team skeet. Would have been, oh, funny. <laughs> that would have been mean. Cause I'm like, I, I although I, Kanye I like, deserves, you know, some, some people to be mean to him, but yeah, that's about, not the moment for and it. And all the comments are like, Kanye, get in touch with me. Kanye, I've got beats for you. Like these, like <laughs> people are like reaching out. I don't think he's reading the comments at all, but I find, I, what did I go with? Um, you said thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm-hmm. Be, that was the response to one of my favorites, which was, like I said, uh, it might've even been like a day after I missed, I missed the timeline here, but at some point he deleted this initial note, but it's insane because yeah, one of my friends sent it to me and it was only 20 minutes after it had been up. And in those 20 minutes, 150,000 people had already liked it and like 5,000 comments. What the fuck? In 20 minutes? That I didn't know uh, people are doing these sorts oh, of... Oh, he's got like... These sorts of numbers. I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't follow anyone. Uh, he's got tens of millions of followers. I've never commented on anything on Instagram except for this now. But I, I tried to enjoy it. I was like, oh, this is cool. It's cool to be a part of one of his rants. You get a little like a little pop. I think maybe people some people discovered me. My TikTok was I was getting a lot of new followers after that. Okay, uh, maybe sold some tickets. Who knows? Uh, tickets are selling out, by the way, uh, for these <laughs> uh, for these shows next month. So go on uh, anthonyjustlink.com and buy tickets if I'm in your area. Hopefully, in a month or two, I'll be announcing my uh, my first half of uh, 2023 tour dates that hopefully will go uh, go just as quickly. But I'm like I'm watching it, and then he starts posting again. I'm like, oh, what is this now? And it's just like a list uh, and pictures of Adidas employees he wants to die. Like uh, people on the board of Adidas. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is all going to go away within, within minutes. Uh, it was amazing and hilarious. Yeah, because that, that's where I was getting confused. I went through his Instagram today to find the post again, and it appeared to be gone. But yeah, there were at least um, eight different executives from Adidas who that he who that he hates that he's just posting and he, he did it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't seem like a a well man. Well, I went to uh, I went to get coffee that day and uh, the, I go to this this new coffee place and this girl is like the girl making the coffee hands me like I ordered mediums and she gave me larges and she's like here you go I'm like oh is this right and she's like yeah I made them extra I'm a big fan of Fire and Maternity Ward. Uh, and I like laughed and was like, oh, thank you. I was like, that's the second best compliment I've gotten all day. And she looks at me like, huh? she's like, what's the first one? I'm like, oh, Kanye West uh, Instagrammed about me. <laughs> and she just looked at me like, what? Like, what are you, <laughs> you, can't bring that up. what are you doing? That I was like, oh, I'll never talk about this again. And I had a bunch of friends from Pittsburgh who apparently there's some meme going around Pittsburgh. That's like, if you, you, there's like a different, uh, your month, your birth month is like what you're doing and the number is corresponding to different people from Pittsburgh. And so you do your birth date and it's like, what? I don't even know. I didn't even read it. But uh, my friend's like, you're in a Pittsburgh meme. You're in a Pittsburgh meme. Isn't You made it. And I'm like, Kanye West was just fucking telling me I'm his favorite or one of his favorites. I don't care about this Pittsburgh meme. Yeah, but the star not, Starbucks lady doesn't even know. People don't care. No, she did not. She seemed like upset, like I was like downgrading her. That's like, that. yeah, that's an embarrassing moment. That's similar. And I do want to get back to Kanye quickly, but it's similar to a moment that actually happened to me this week. I was uh, getting Walker, my son, started at a, a tennis um, class. And he was like, as it was starting, he was just like, I, he's like, I know you. You, you look you look really familiar. Like, I, I know you. I'm just not sure from where. And I was like, oh, I, I you know, I do a podcast. I'm, I'm on NFL Network, like with this pick show. And then he was like, He just looked at me like I was the biggest fucking asshole ever. And then he was like, oh, no, you were you were in the camp with us er early in the summer. Right. I I was teaching Walker. I was like, oh, yeah, Yeah. I fucking never. I've never been like I'm on TV. (laughs) 
So I was like, how do I know you? Like, I don't He's know, like, man. No, you signed up for a class with me three months ago. I was like, oh. But that's his bad. That's his bad for coming in hot, being like, I know you. I know. What do I know you from? I felt like, um, I felt uh, very small in that moment. I, and um, I won't mention it again. Did you think about, if you could go back and do that moment again, would you just deny that you were in the camp? It's like, no, no, you must, I would have, must listen to the podcast. I, I, that would have been the first thing that came to my mind would have been like, oh yeah, I recognize you. Uh, he took a class with you like three months ago. Yeah. That, that's how, uh, do you, what do, you, if, do you think people recognize you from your, from the podcast? Like you look like you sound, uh, people have been saying in our, uh, in our email address, JRVP junior vice president, gmail.com that the, the video, and we are on YouTube people check it out on Anthony's, uh, personal page on YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to it. Uh, that I look very different. A lot of people saying I'm better looking than they expected. Well, now, that I'm, might be a bit that they're continuing, but I, I thought you were going to say a lot of people were saying you're better looking than me. And I was like, there's no fucking way. No, but. people aren't saying that, but they're just like, oh, I didn't think, you know, I, I had an image, you know, and, and his pictures aren't great, but like, he's okay. If I'm a 10, you're a six. I'm like a seven and a half. I'm I'll just give, small. I'll give, I'll give you seven Depends and a half. how much you're into like, you know, body size. If you, you know, ultimately a lot of women and men aren't going to be into like a really uh, petite looking uh, gentleman. But if you, if you don't mind that, then, then I'm like a eight and a half. No. <laughs> Do you know why this Kanye thing popped up in the first place? It was actually Kanye debunking like this viral post that I had seen and actually sent, um, to, to Emika because I thought it was funny, which, which someone had posted that Kanye had sent out that that Kim has diarrhea a lot. Your your girl Kim, um, like way more than than a normal person should have, uh, and he was saying that was not actually him. So he was debunking that. It was copying like a tweet format he's used before, but that was not his actual. But this tweet. is from like years ago too, right? He just now decided to jump out and and like, get I get in front know. of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's cool. And he was Even, saying like that person's not funny. You want to know what is funny? Me. Hedberg, Jesselnik, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz was like, I don't feel like, Liz was, seemed like she was more excited about it than I was. I was like, how excited can I get? Like, it's cool for sure. I remember when I, like maybe 10, 15 years ago now, I was uh, doing a show in New York. I was living in New York at the time, and Aziz Ansari asked me to open for him at this comedy club called Comics. And it's, uh, it's Hannibal Burris going first, and then me, and then Aziz. And someone comes back, the place is packed. This is like Aziz is like blowing up. And uh, they're like, oh, Kanye's in the crowd. And we're all fucking pumped. This is like 15 wow. years ago, Kanye, where everyone's just like, oh my God, there's no problem here. We're all excited. And Hannibal goes out and murders. Hannibal's like whole act is about hip hop. Like the place is just going crazy. Like it's the building shaking. And I'm just like, oh. And then I went out and ate a hot dick. Really? For 20 straight minutes. Just like no laugh. People were just like, oh, where's the disease? Like it was just brutal. And I'm the whole time, like I wish no one had told me Kanye was here. What year is this? It would have been 2000. Eight two thousand nine. So you were pretty good then. It was more, I was, go, it was, I was more good. their fault than you. And I think it was just it was people who were like very into what Hannibal was doing and what Aziz was doing were not into what I was doing. Well, Kanye sure. was in the audience, and that's when you first uh, yeah, won I him just over. Probably. You that. I don't think he remembered that I was. I'm there. just saying that's when he first was like, I like this guy, and he's been following your career since. A lot of people have tried to tell me why he likes me. They'll be like, I, it makes sense that he would like thoughts and prayers because at the end when you get into it, I'm like, what if he liked the whole special? What if he just liked me and that was a good picture, the best picture he could find? Like, why do you, why do you have to decide what he liked about me a certain bit? Like, oh, when you say this phrase, I bet he uh, liked that. Like, That's weird. He likes it all. He's into it. Well, plus he, Hedberg was next. He, I think he likes, I, I mean, I think he has pretty good taste for the most part. I mean, Kevin Hart and Jumanji, that is his best work. I mean, if I was going to pick one Kevin Hart thing to watch <laughs> over and over again, it would, be, it would be him and Jumanji. How do you think Kevin Hart um, felt when he learned about this because i'm sure it was um blowing up his social media at, at some point someone at least let kevin hart know about this how do you think he took uh the parentheses in jumanji i bet he picked up a dollhouse and wanted to smash it over kanye's head he's probably holding the dollhouse <laughs> above his head looking around for kanye do you know what that is a reference to no doesn't matter the listeners do you don't have to get it greg how did you deal with the heat this week you told me earlier, I want you to tell the people, because it's a dope, it's a bomb ass way to handle the heat. I am not handling it well. It hasn't ended. It's in uh, Los Angeles. We're having a heat wave. Not as bad where, where I'm at, Santa Monica, as you. We're near the water, but still pretty, pretty brutal. And a lot of places in Santa Monica, including mine, doesn't have air conditioning. I do not have air conditioning still. I'm looking to uh, fix that soon. 
Um, so we stayed at a, a hotel nearby. That's so, like, so you stayed, like you went there, like it just checked in, went to the pool, stayed there that night in the AC, and then went home. Yes, but it was just one night. And that was, it, like, Still- I, I initially proposed doing it for like three nights. Let's go the whole weekend. But we had other things going on that made it a little awkward or weird, and, and we decided to do it one night. And yeah, it was awesome. But then last night, we were just back in the house uh, sweating our ass off. Yeah, but getting that one night... Like, knowing you did it, that's a cool thing to do. It was that awesome. Helps, they stayed in the mentally. pool the entire time, too. They were in it. Like, uh, the, kid, the kids absolutely loved it. Um, I've yeah. just had to, like, I've just had to, like, it hasn't really changed my life during this past week, but I have to get up super early to take Rummy out. Like, I try to just tire him out so he doesn't need to go outside again because the pavement's too hot. It's not just the heat. Like I could walk him around the block. But I either get up really early. I just got up early and took him to the park. And there was fucking no one at the park on a holiday weekend. I was I was surprised, but not uh, not too surprised. But yeah, he, like when we notice. moved to Santa Monica, people I, I had brought an air conditioning unit at least just to put in the window. And be, oh, you're you're not gonna need it. You don't need any air conditioning. And for the most part, that's that has been accurate. But you know what that person uh, didn't think about? Climate change. Hmm. They didn't. Because <laughs> this fucking heat wave is more intense and longer uh, than anything I've been through. And this will be the last heat wave that the Rosenthal family uh, suffers through without air conditioning one way or another. I, at some point, it's on me. Mm-hmm. It's you got to man up. I have, I have you failed. Gotta provide we for need your to either move or uh, fix the situation. You know, you know what else was hot? I do want to get this in before moving on or anything. I got something to move on okay. to. Okay, what is it? I was going to say, speaking of heat, I was going to have to do a similar thing, but Rummy got recognized oh. this weekend. Whoa. Yeah. Took him, I was walking him in the morning, early morning, took him into a coffee shop, the, the one coffee shop on my route that allows dogs. And this guy came over, he like, he like put his coffee away and is walking out and he goes, hey, I don't want to bother you, I just want to say I'm a big fan of yours. And I was like, oh, thank you, which is like a perfect way to, to do it. And then he looks down at Rummy and goes, I'm a big fan of you too, Rummy. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like it was weird. It was like, it was like someone like guessing your pin number or something. I was just like, oh, you know my dog's name. And it was like, I hope this happens more often. I, and the guy, then the guy just left us alone. He didn't try to pet Rummy. Rummy looked up at him like kind of appreciative, you know, but Rummy's getting kind of a big head over it. And the guy just walked out and I was like, cool. Rummy got recognized. Well, that's the way to do it. People ask sometimes, uh, what's the way to, uh, best way to approach it? I would say another move could be just go straight up to Rummy and say, like, I recognize you. Rummy, yeah, I'd Rummy. be psyched if someone's like, hey, hey, what's up, Rummy? Love, love you. Love the What gram. if he completely ignores you and just talks to Rummy? Even better. <laughs> Even better. It's pretty cool, though, to have, uh, I mean, your, your dog... Uh, at some point, it's going to have more followers on Instagram than me. I bet he, mu- he must be a listener of the podcast to know about the dog. Yes. And we've talked on the podcast about how to approach me. And he did it like a textbook. So I think he, he listens and knew, knew what to just come up and say, big fan, and keep moving. Sorry, I'm getting like this long uh, extended text in my phone. What happened? In my the, phone. Did a placeholder get cut? No, it was like uh, it was the California Department of Energy saying like, Turn off your air conditioning. So it was very topical Way for, what, you, bro. for what we're uh, what we're talking about. I was gonna, I was gonna say earlier. You know what else is um, really hot these days? <laughs> what? <laughs> the butthole challenge. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, how has it been taken off? Um, it was something that you really said to me to bring to my home. Mm-hmm. And now I want to bring it to the people. We actually didn't ask our listeners. Um, to try to do the butthole challenge. But how would you describe like what the butthole challenge would be? Basically telling your classic butthole joke at home to, to people that you know. The love. butthole challenge, I would say, and I've just, I haven't given this any thought, but this is what I, how I imagine it, is you go up to uh, anyone. You go up to someone. It could be a friend. It could be a stranger. I think a friend is better uh, than a stranger, but I'll take whatever. And you want to get them to look at your fingers. Yeah. Get the, rub your hands together. Do one of these. Do like the little like kind of like the money symbol or whatever. And ask someone while they look at your fingers, do you know what the dirtiest part of the human body is? And then no matter what they say, just t- then put, take your hand away and say the butthole. You got to say <laughs> the butthole. And then record their reaction. And it's better if they laugh, but it's just as good if they don't. Yeah. So if, um, if you want to uh, take the butthole challenge either. And you want to. <laughs> But if you're like brave enough to go out there into the world and try the butthole challenge. Right. You can send, send us uh, your responses on, uh, on social media, I guess. Or you could send it to jrvpjuniorvicepresident at gmail.com. 
Um, and make sure if you put it on Instagram, make sure you tag Kanye. He's going to want to see that. He's going to want to know. I bet he's doing it. I don't know how. It's going to be a little tricky to record people's reaction. I guess it could, in theory it no, could be a voice a, memo even. Hold a phone. Put, hold a phone. I guess, put but your then people up. are going to, you know, not, they're going to feel uncomfortable. They'll, they'll almost know some sort of joke. Sure, if you're coming. filming anyone, they're going to be feeling uncomfortable. But if you just get the, the, you, the, you have to get them to look at your fingers or your hands and then get them to, to answer. So I went home and did it. I, I wish I had heard your like exact instructions because I feel like I probably messed up the joke um, or at least led into it a little bit more. I think you just got to go right there and get to the punchy part, not say like that's... I think I said science, scientists have been studying, like this new study was out about the what the <laughs> dirtiest part of uh, the human body is. Do you know what it is? Uh, and so I said that... Uh, to Emika, but Walker w was in the room, and Emika just like looked at me like I was a jerk, and Walker guessed it. He jumped right in, and he was just like, the butt. Really? Yeah, he got it. And then I did it later in the week to Ellis, and she immediately said, the butthole. She got it too. They both nailed it. Well, first of all, they listened to the podcast. <laughs> they listen almost in real time. As soon as it's posted, yeah. they listen to it, and then they watch the YouTube video afterwards to see because they'd like to see our reactions by the way if you watch the youtube video this week we are wearing the the uh heavily praised jrvp JR merch greg's rocking the horse i'm rocking the diner um we're into it I, we just got these today we do, i brought it to greg he was like i gotta put this on right now he was psyched i said i mean if you're gonna be wearing it and this is like maybe we'll take a picture and send it out i'll do that uh, i just figured this would be the merch show we're not gonna wear merch every show but if you're wearing it yeah we got the two different shirts on people should check it out at anthony's site i feel like we're just doing a lot of plug in here but the thing i really want to plug we're is plugging that, that, is that butthole <laughs> <laughs> i think kids are kids are immune to the butthole challenge well they liked it. they didn't get it i mean kids yeah, if a seven-year-old boy especially, but I would say even up to fifth grade where, where Ellis is, there's a lot of butthole talk. Uh, they, mm -hmm. know, they know what the dirtiest part is. Like, the butthole is a common, um, you know, topic at our house, I would say. Buttholes are wasted on the young. People say that. Uh, yeah, s send us those. Uh, put it on social media. I think it's just a good time. You know, do it at dinner if you can. Or a funeral. Winner, winner at a funeral. That's, that's for sure. Um, How's your, you know what? I wanted to ask you about this. I wrote this down earlier in the week. How's your, what's your tattoo situation? Greg has told us, I don't know if you talked about it in the air, but I don't think this is, I'm talking out of school here, but you've been wanting to get a tattoo. You have a design in mind. You, don't, you just know what you want, but you want someone to draw it for you and then put it on you, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm, wor I'm working on that. I, I was hoping to have it done for some reason before the start of the NFL season, just because that's when I got a tattoo last year and it just felt like a good, uh, mm -hmm. almost like a ceremonial. Oh, maybe I'll do this every year. Uh, that's not going to happen in time. I was hoping to get it done this week. Probably not going to happen, but I'm working on it and uh, it's coming. See, I like to get them You've on the road. You've got a bunch, right? I've got a bunch uh, and I, I've, I've one I'm getting in a couple of weeks. And How many I total do you have, do you think, at this point? Do you know? I mean, I'd have to go through and count, but I always forget some. Is it uh, over 10? Yes. Wow. But not, not too high over 10. And some of them are like, I don't know if you do touch up, some of them have been added to, so I don't know exactly how to count it. But I had an idea for another one that I wanted that I was like, I don't know what artist to go to. So I want to like, cast a net to the JRVP listeners. If the, I got to assume that we got some tattoo artists who listen. If you want to tattoo me and Greg, pitch us. Email us at JRVP Junior Vice President at Gmail and tell us why you should be the one to tattoo us. And if I'm in your city or if you're in LA, maybe Greg and I come to you, both come to you and get tattoos, but we well, gotta know what we're doing. You just said me and Greg. Is this, this isn't like a-, a It's not a matching situation. Oh, okay. I have, I I have one saying. I want, you have one you want, gotcha. and we'll, we'll see. But I, want, I, would, I like getting tattoos from people who know who I am. It just makes it easier and kind of like, I trust them more. But, uh, but all the tattoo artists- How do I've you know to who to get on, when you're on the road? You just get a recommendation? I've never gotten on the road unless I've been with someone who's like, I know this guy, like my Queens of the Stone Age tattoo. Uh, I was with them and Josh knew a guy and was like, oh, we're going, we're going there. But I, uh, I got to find someone while I'm, I like getting on the road. It's fun a way to mark being on the road. So I'm getting, I'm getting one in a couple of weeks mm. uh, and then maybe an, uh, another one if, uh, if someone steps up. Otherwise I got to find the artist and make an appointment. Um, Dang, I, now you made me want to get, get this tattoo in London wh where I'm going in, in about three weeks and I'm going to have some uh, tickets to mention next week. Yeah, if, so, if, so, if it's a London tattoo artist, this is your time to shine. Um, and that was the week. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for Did We Get Any Notes? Did We Get Any Notes? Notes. 
We did not. Clean week. And that was. Did we get any notes? <laughs> Email corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. Thing. Now it's time for Email Corner, the uh, corner brought to you by email. Email. Use it. We got some uh, we got some. We're questions bringing the email week. back. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, it had a little while where it fell out of uh, popular discourse. Uh, but that book uh, by Alif Batuman, The Idiot, really brought email back a little bit. And now Email Corner is really bringing it all the way. The Idiot, and then she wrote, they wrote Either Or. Was this was yeah, a sequel? She, yeah, I'm, I'm ready the one. I'm ready the one. Oh. So good. Go ahead. Uh, all right. I got lots of emails. One is from Dylan. Um, he says he recently lost his dad. And like a normal person, uh, he's having a hard time. People that he barely knew or barely liked keep asking him, how is he doing while looking at him like an abused puppy with their head slightly tilted to the side? Any thoughts on a good one-liner to avoid having that person ever be interested in my life again? Love the pod. Golden retrievers can go extinct. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Dylan. I mean, it depends on how, and I'm all for this. This is exactly what I would do uh, if I was getting a lot of like sympathy from people. It was, it's annoying. And I have friends who have lost people. Uh, I've never lost anyone really close to me, but I have friends who have lost people. And they say it's one of the worst parts. It's like getting hugged in the gym, you know, by someone who's just like, oh, you must need something. It's like, leave me alone. I get the, they're, they're offering their condolences freely. I get it's like a nice thing to do. But I also understand why when you're mourning, you don't want to deal with that shit. So you have options. You could just go like super short, you know, like don't waste my time. Or you could like really try to fuck with somebody. So it's like someone, if someone's like, uh, you know, I'm sorry to hear your dad died. You could just be like, you didn't know him, okay? You didn't know him. And then walk away, leave a little mystery. Like they're thinking like what's happening. Or like ask me, uh, say that to me. Okay. Off your I, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I heard your father passed away. You must be devastated. Oh, you must have me confused with someone else. I'm glad my dad's dead. <laughs> I think that would shut down shit forever. I mean, they would both shut down shit forever. The first answer, like you can say anything you want and people will give you, you know, any room that you want. The second answer if it's a <laughs> if it's a continuing relationship that they that you plan to have, I don't know. It just feels like there might be more questions in the future. Don't no 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 for no uh, no further questions. Say that at the end. Uh, I'm, I, or uh, how about like uh, wait, let me, oh let, you're sorry my dad's dead. <laughs> let me set set that up. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, like I, I heard your father passed away. You, you must be devastated. Oh, you're the one. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I wish it was you instead. <laughs> I would trade your life in a heartbeat from my dad's. How's your dad doing, you piece of shit? Well, he's dead too. Good. They're probably playing poker right now, you fucking loser. <laughs> Damn. Um, I don't know if Dylan's really getting any takeaways Let's Try here. it again. Do it again. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I heard your father... What? <laughs> I, I, I didn't even finish what I was no, saying. I went earlier. You, you paused too long. I'm so sorry. I heard your father passed away. He what? <laughs> I got to call my mom. Can you give me a ride? I think that would be great. I think that would be perfect. Uh, <laughs> Do it one more time. All right, I'm, I'm, Anthony, I'm, I'm so sorry your dad passed away. Oh, no. This is what my mom's been keeping from me. <laughs> I've got the biggest game of my life coming up. Oh. <laughs> but in this, in this scenario, Dylan's like a... A professional athlete what doesn't know you, you can just say i got okay. the biggest game of my life coming up okay. and they'll feel bad um i think yeah i think it's a great a great question um i think i think uh sometimes people put put it on you um even saying you must be devastated is almost tricky because what if the person really isn't feeling as uh down about it because they didn't have a good relationship you don't know anything about what the situation is so like putting less on people that's not a, a good reason thing. to not offer condolences no 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 i know but i I think there are certain ways to speak about it, and you don't even need to say that. You must be devastated because you're then projecting like some sort of feeling onto them. Like you say less, you know what I mean? Just say, say you're you're sorry to hear that. You know, I, just like people a lot of time I know that have suffered a loss say they really hate when people say like, oh, I just can't imagine what that's like. It's like because when you 
are saying that, you're like othering yourself immediately. First of all, it's like, well, fucking imagine it then. Like, it, it's because it's going to happen to you. It's the most universal sure, thing that's, that's ever happened. But all it's not making someone feel better to be like, oh, the pain you're going through right now, that's way worse than anything I could imagine. But that's sort of how it kind of comes across. But I think across. saying I can't imagine is like the antithesis of being like, I know what you're going through. Because you truly don't. Even if you lost a parent right, and they lost a parent. Sort of what I'm so. saying is like, say less. Yeah, because of Sorry that, for your troubles. Yeah. Sorry for your troubles is great. I got that from the Sorry department. for your troubles. Mm -hmm. Don't make them have to say something back to you. Yes. You know, just be like, I'm sorry for your loss and keep moving. That way, if they, if they want to, if they want to mourn with you, they can bring it up. But you're not like, and now give me my flowers for fucking telling you that I'm sorry your dad's That's dead. That's what I mean. Try one more time. Uh, Anthony, I'm, I'm so sorry your dad passed away. Do you have any drugs? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Say less. Just, just, just be there. Yeah, that's the thing. Just be there. Hug. Just hug people. Be be quiet. I mean, the hug is depends okay, on who okay. it is. Do one more time. If I was, if it was you, I I would feel comfortable hugging you. Um, but um, like if you're a fan of yours, I, you know, don't go up to Anthony and hug him. Or hug them, and while they're you're hugging them, whisper in their ear, "I'm not comfortable." <laughs> one more time. There's just some people you're not comfortable hugging. Anthony, I'm so sorry. Uh, I heard your dad pass away. You must be devastated. Do you know what the dirtiest part of the human body is? <laughs> no. What? My dad's butthole. <laughs> if I had a music cue right now, I would just bang it. But we got more questions. Uh, who uh, wins in a pickleball ball match? This is from Jen. Little uh, topical question here. Uh, Anthony versus Greg. Okay. But, in, you know, I'm... Just, I think Jen's assuming I'm better at racket sports, so she's giving me an edge a here. Fair assumption. Uh, Anthony versus Greg, but all the nine-year-olds that they killed in an earlier JRVP hypothetical are laying all over Greg's side of the court. How many nine-year-olds is that? I don't know. And the pickleball court's small, right? So it's like that's those, they're taking a lot of space. Yeah. So who wins? You've got the nine-year-olds I might have ma court. messed up like a two-part joke Jen had and like cut out the first question because I didn't like it here. Um, but yeah, I think... Plenty, plenty of nine-year-olds are all over my court. Dead? Or are they alive? Yeah, they're dead. Okay, then I think uh, I think I would win. And listen, I think straight up pickleball, a game I didn't understand or know about, you would win. You're the better tennis player uh, by far. Um, but I think if there are nine-year-olds in the court, you're trying to avoid them. I'm trying to hit them. I'm not even worried about the game. I'm trying to hit dead ten-year-olds with a, a pickleball as a tennis ball. It wouldn't be that hard. A pickleball court is small. Uh, maybe this is a callback to some uh, question recently we had about uh, killing young people. I, I don't really remember, but all you would really need is like three, four, I mean, even two would fill up a pretty big chunk of a pickleball court. And one of the things I, that's most important about pickleball is footwork. Do you know how hard it would be to like get into the right positioning for me to hit the right shot around all these nine-year-olds? Much less if you actually hit the nine-year-old, like points over, you win the point. Well, I'm giving it to Jesselnik. And how dead are the nine-year-olds? Is it like they just drop dead right there and their body's like decomposed? Or is it like, have they been dead for quite some time and they got slopped onto the court? Are they bleeding? Are you slipping in what, blood? What would that matter if they had been dead a long time or not? Are they leaking fluids? Are you slipping in them? If you don't step on the body, are you slipping in nine-year-oldness? You know? Because that is going to be harder for you. I think if it's just kids on the ground, they might as well be fucking pillows. You're I mean, still going to lose. You make it sound like it's like like an, uh, a waterfall of liquids that are coming out of dead bodies. I don't I don't. At some point, that's... once I once I whack it with the pickleball, <laughs> they're gonna, there's going to be a little it's, eruption. You're going to knock the snot out of a dead nine-year-old. Yeah, I think I think Anthony wins that. It's such a huge uh, a huge advantage. Like if you're looking for one, like if you're playing someone better, it's, it's sort of like a handicap in golf. You know what I mean? Just to even it out. I would say just like one nine-year-old would be enough to really tilt the scales. Mm -hmm. Any more than that, it's over. Uh, Did you get hate for your pickleball stance last week? No, I got a lot of love. I got a lot of love. A lot of people that were like, hey, look, Eric, it's another person that hate these asshole pickleballers. You know, I got a lot of people uh, supporting me. I support your hatred of pickleball. I, he I hear a lot of neighborhoods are against it. And I've seen people have been like tagging us and stuff. It's like people like putting up signs like we're going to sue that stop people from playing pickleball all day long. Um, I was supposed to call the episode last week. My my uh, title for the episode was Death to the Pickleball Brigade, but it ended up as Death to Pickleball. Was that your bad or Aaron's bad? That was my bad. All right. I guess. You're off the hook, Aaron. I don't even remember, but I'm just assuming that I wrote it down. I don't know. You know, I'm a good... Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm a good friend, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna step in front of uh, the bullet for Aaron, just in case. No, you guys are really you know. guys are close. <laughs> uh, our next uh, question is from Ash. Uh, she says she's a big fan from Sheffield in the UK. Uh, of the podcast and both of your individual careers. Uh, my question is, both of you discussed this week about the college you attended, Tulane. Obviously, you both met there, became friends there. Have you ever thought if your careers and lives would be different if you hadn't met and become friends? Would you still be doing the same things or has your friendship influenced each other? Also, they want to know if you're going to tour over there, Anthony. I will at some points. Usually, I usually hit Europe at the very, very end, but things might change because of everything that's, that's been going on and, and how long this next tour is going to be. So I don't know when I'm going to be there, but it's not going to be. If, if I got there next year, it would be surprising. So I would think maybe 2024, uh, if not 2025. But I will be there, and I will make a meal out of this next European tour. I always love uh, playing England. Um, I don't know if I don't know if we hadn't gone to Tulane, but like, here's, what, here's what Tulane gave me. In but saying our to, friendship especially, would you be doing the same? Our friendship? I mean, you wouldn't have come out to L.A. if, uh, if we hadn't been friends. Because, but, but it's not just our friendship, but being friends with who we were at Tulane, we met Lloyd, who didn't even go to Tulane, went to UCLA, but was from New Orleans, who brought us to L.A. I don't know if I make it to L.A. if not for Lloyd. So like Lloyd had more of an impact than, any, than all four years of Tulane. Although if I went to a different school, not only do we not meet, but I may have like learned something that was like an actual skill I could use in real life. I like I may it. have just become something that wasn't a comedian. Like, and I never thought hmm. about being a comedian at Tulane. I know, but you might have just naturally ended up being attracted to it anyway. But you're right. You might, if you didn't end up in LA, would have you have ever thought to start doing stand up? You seemed pretty focused at the time on becoming a writer. Mm -hmm. And maybe you would have pivoted and realized stand up is up your alley. But maybe not. Maybe you would have just like done the writing thing and gone deep into it or i would have given that up i mean like a lot of people do i mean i was already looking at like how do i become a travel writer you just go somewhere and just write down everything you do like i was trying to find ways to not be a novelist that i'd originally wanted mm. to be but i don't I, it was mostly the relationships i made in new orleans that made me uh come to la made me kind of be, become a comedian i don't know if we influenced each other once our careers got going of just like oh this is cool we're doing it but i don't well, think you, so you took credit for my sports career because you uh, encouraged me to start a blog mm -hmm. when we were out in L.A. Mm, mm -hmm. That's true. That's I mean, true. I wouldn't say, like, you were the only reason I started that blog. Uh, but you definitely encouraged me to get it going. And I sort of had the light bulb uh, go off after I started working at Fox Sports on the weekend See, to get into sports. So you, you, you have some You're forgetting about sophomore year of college when I showed you your first football game. <laughs> when I was like, look at this. And I explained the rules. And, and you, things took off for you. I, w I was an announcer on Tulane Student Television for the football team before I ever even met you. Freshman year. So how about that? Uh, but yeah, if we hadn't landed in L.A., I don't know. I don't know if uh, we still would have gotten here. Um, you've, had, you've had quite an influence on me. Yeah, I wonder if I went to Indiana University, like I would have done if I hadn't gotten to Tulane, like would I have become a comedian? I don't know. I like to think maybe, but I, I mean, it's not worth, you know, uh, stressing out over, but I don't know. I, don't I think, think so. you would have. I, I think I would have gotten into the political uh, sphere because that was sort of where my head was at. Like, I don't, like similar broadcasting and or podcasting, something like that eventually. Um, but that's sort of what I thought I was going to get into. All right, and next question. But you know what? Then friendship makes you not quit because it's like I'm accountable to you. Once I told you that I was trying to stand up comedy, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't be like come to you and be like, I'm not doing that anymore because that would have been so lame. That it was really only you that mm. uh, that was in LA at the time that I was like, I've got to keep doing this for Greg. I can't disappoint him. I we get, we're gonna have a podcast one day. There's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think our listeners would think you're joking, but there's some truth to that. I wouldn't say I'm the only person. That I mean, the fact that. that I waited months to even tell you important. I was doing stand-up. That was the most important. You were the person I'd known the longest in L.A. and We were roommates. We lived together. But, uh, but yeah, I waited months to even tell you I was doing stand-up. True. And, but, and when you said it, I very much felt like, oh, yeah, this is the thing. This mm -hmm. is the thing. He's going to do great. And so you had to. Or yeah, else totally you supportive. You would have uh, let me down. And we wouldn't have this podcast. That, that obviously would have never happened. And um, this podcast is turning into a, a fantastic uh, second job that will hopefully I want to make send it your my first kids job. to college. I, I mean, make it your first that's, one. that's stupid. Why do they need to be competitive? Have multiple jobs. But may, it we're will not, get me out of the air conditioning. Let's get to air conditioning 2023 JRVP. We're not going to be competitive, but I am going to win. <laughs> 
Uh, our final question is from Ryan. We're going deep here. Uh, he's an average stand-up in Portland. Which is an where? average stand-up in Portland? I never heard of something. <laughs> it's where our friend uh, Don Marshall will help me. Uh, Kyle Kinane was just in the studio uh, earlier. He's, he lives in Portland. Right. Don, Don is not a, a stand-up, but he does listen to the show, so shout out to him sometimes. Yeah, uh, what, what happened, Don? I thought you were coming in June. Right. You said you're going you're gonna to go out to dinner with us. Uh, you'll hit us up, and never happened. Never happened. Last never heard we heard from you. from you. What the fuck, Don? the fuck? I blame Barry. Mm -hmm. What the fuck, Barry? Uh, I sometimes get told I have a slight Jesselnik influence. How does Anthony feel about not only being a comic, but a specific style of comedy? How does Anthony feel about people who have some of his style mixed in? Uh, I love it. Um, I expect it. Uh, I think, you know, when I started out, I just like copied the people that I really looked up to and loved and luckily found a way uh, to make it my own thing. But when I started out, I, a lot of people would come up to me like, oh, you're like Stephen Wright. You're like Mitch Hedberg. Uh, you're like this, you're like that. When I went on the road, same thing. People like, you're like this, you're like that. They just want to tell you what they see in you. You d don't pay attention to that. I don't know how long you've been doing it. Eventually that should go away. People should stop telling you you're like this, you're like that. Um, but yeah, I love when I see my influence in someone else. And I don't always think that that's the case, but people are doing dark stuff, one linery stuff, you know, more of an ego on stage. Like I'm, uh, I'm proud of, uh, of what I've accomplished in terms of, you know, uh, making my mark on the art form, getting Kanye West's attention. Uh. So yeah, that is the style it. he likes, by the way, probably, uh, if you and Mitch Hedberg are not that you're exactly the same, but I could see, uh, if you like Mitch Hedberg, you might like Anthony Jeselnik. Mm -hmm. And if That's there's true. one thing I've learned from, uh, listening to uh, Mark Maron's podcast is that every comedian says they were just ripping off people at the beginning and yeah, they grow out of it. Totally. If you say, if you're like, I'm totally original right off the bat, you're bad. You see, you have a year <laughs> of grace that you can straight up copy people. Like, not material, but you can, like, copy them and do, like, this is Seinfeld talking about my apartment or whatever the fuck. Um, but after a year, you better have your own, uh, your own thing or be less obvious. It's just, uh, it's not like a lodge. It's not good for you. But, yeah, uh, eat it up, man. We're bringing email back. And that was Email Corner. It's the best corner. <laughs> And now it's time for ad copy. Fuck yeah, Aaron. Black Buffalo. You might be asking, what makes Black Buffalo unique? I was just about to ask that and you cut me off. So Black Buffalo is everything you love about dipping, mm. including the pharmaceutical grade nicotine, mm. just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. So if you're over 21 and you dip or you chew, whether it's pouches or long cut, you got to try Black Buffalo. This is a tobacco alternative. It's made out of edible green leaves, food-grade ingredients, same flavors, texture, aroma, pack, and nicotine as traditional tobacco products. They got different flavors, wintergreen, mint, straight peach, and uh, blood orange. Straight peach is not one flavor. That's, the comma should be between straight and peach. Both good. And it is. Uh, you can get it at Black blackbuffalo.com uh, like we said uh, long cut or pouches they also have some nicotine free options called zero uh, you can get a subscription option so they just send it to you every month uh, it looks great they sent us some like very cool looking uh, branding cool looking packs uh, and uh, we've heard uh, from our listeners who are, are big fans. They're, they're made in limited quantities and they do small batch runs so you can count on the best quality from Black Buffalo like I said, it's 2022. You're still dipping tra traditional tobacco or those white portion things, uh, and you're over 21. It's time to get with Black Buffalo. Everything you love about dipping without the actual tobacco leaf or stem, head to blackbuffalo.com. Use the promo code JRVP at checkout for 25% off your first order. That's the best offer you'll find. You have to use the code JRVP, 25% off your first order. One last time. Do you know it by now, the promo code? Can you remember it? Promo code JRVP. For how much off your first order? 10% off. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. I was guessing on both those answers. You nailed it. Uh, you're also going to uh, nail something on your Helix mattress a little later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, take the Helix sleep quiz. Find your perfect mattress in under two minutes, and your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door 
free of charge. Uh, there's no better way to test out a new mattress than sleeping on it in your own home. You don't want to just like go to the store. It's awkward bouncing around. Can you really tell? I, I've tried doing that, and it's like I can't really tell. You can't tell shit. You can't tell in like a minute. You couldn't even tell if you like hang out there for five minutes. You need a whole night. You you might need you ninety can, nine nights. Minutes. Right. I would say even hours. Some people sleep in there. That's a weird thing. Uh, you might need it for ninety eight nights. I wouldn't go 99 99. because there's a 100 night risk free trial and I feel like if you're waiting until the 99th night I don't know something could go wrong and you might not get the shipping you know sent back or everything worked out just I would cut it off at 98 but you get 98 nights risk free and then if you don't decide uh, that if you decide you don't like it uh, you get a full refund but you're not going to need the refund you're going to like it like we like our uh, Helix mattresses I once bought a bed and then tried to return it, but it was a hundred night. It was less than a hundred nights to me, but I'd been on the road, so I hadn't been home that much. I was like, I only get to sleep on this like one day a week. Not and then Helix, I'm gone again. No, I no, this, this. this is this pre Helix. This was Tempur Pedic. It was which I hate so much. I got rid of it to go to Helix, uh, and I love my Helix. But Tempur Pedic was like, no, that's not how it works. It's a hundred days in a row. You don't just tell us when you're home and, <laughs> and we go off of that. It's been like six months. They wouldn't give it back. That's. It's uh, ridiculous that you tried it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get soft, medium, or firm, whether you sleep on your side or your back or your stomach. Like, they have a different mattress for you. They come with 10 or 15-year warranty. Uh, like I said, 100 nights risk-free. They've been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP, $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Every time I hear that ad, I think about the line from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Which is what? Where's your hand? Between two pillows. Why? Those aren't pillows, and they get up and start screaming. <laughs> but Steve Martin has his hand up John Candy's ass. Shout out to the Butthole Challenge. Mm -hmm. The original. Uh, Athletic Greens, what a product. Uh, it is uh, one scoop of in a cup of water every day. I like to just describe what it is right off the bat. We've been doing this read for a while, but I, I, if you're new to the show or you're unfamiliar, it's a scoop. You put it in the container. You put the water in. You shake it up. You drink it. And after you drink it, you've got all the vitamins you need all in one tasty little beverage. Why is your space work so bad? Like, if you're listening to this, it sounds fine. But if you watch Greg, like, the cup is, like, the cup's moving around. He doesn't put it in his mouth space when he goes work. to put it back. Yeah, that's what they call it. I'm focusing on a lot of stuff. I mean, you were saying how professional these ads read are. Ad reads when are. did I say that? You, uh, a while ago, a couple weeks ago with, like, the pre-rolls. I mean, I'd like, to, again, I'd like to see you try to do it for one episode and uh, and hit the little sound drops and we'll see how it goes i like to see you do an hour on stage but who gives a fuck it's never gonna happen yeah i would be terrible at that but i don't pretend like i wouldn't be like, i don't pretend like i just said you're bad at it <laughs> not that i would be better i'm at great it. i'm great you know what else is great not your space work athletic athletic greens uh costs less than three dollars per day what season is it it's cold and flu season Thank it's you. coming up the kids are getting sick at school mm. every like they're they're passing germs around uh. Give them some vitamins. Yes. It tastes great. Uh, whole food, food source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. <laughs> it's got it all. It's a micro habit with big <laughs> benefits. <laughs> habit. Shit. Uh, right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash JRVP. We've taken like six minutes on this, uh, these ad reads. Maybe if you didn't stop checking your phone. Well, my son is just like blowing me up. We gave him this uh, thing well, called the, the middle of let's, an ad let's read? Finish, let's finish the ad read. <laughs> let's, it's just you. All you have to do, visit athleticgreens.com slash JRVP. That's athleticgreens.com slash JRVP to take ownership over your health. Pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, he's got this little And thing. that was. Bad copy. He's got this thing. It's called like a gab watch. Uh -huh. a, a lot of the kids have it now. I've heard, um, I've it's heard not a term. real um, phone, but it's like 
it's something we compromise to let Ellis, our, our fifth grader, have one because a lot of her friends already have phones. And you can just program it so that they can only call you. They can't text at all, mm-hmm. but you can contact them if you, if you need it. And he's just always like, he's blowing me up. He's like asking me, stu- you know, it's stupid. Is it, it's are you ever worried that it's like he's in the back of a trunk somewhere? I mean, I listen if they leave like an audio message. That's the only way they can, you know, communicate. Um, but no, it's 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 dinner time. He's hanging out and he's just seeing what's up. Okay. I mean, Emika would let me know. It's not like he's walking around the neighborhood lost. We'll he, see. <laughs> he would call her first. Uh, let's let's get the headlines, please. Do we have a song? Let's get the headlines. Let's get, let's get the headlines. 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 Really going hard away from the music this week. This first story was so, uh, was Jesselnik, you know, chosen. Surprise. Uh, because it's confusing, I was surprised, and I'm not sure where the comedy is going to come from, but I'm looking forward to it. It's about two comedians, Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears. Ari Spears. Who was acu- both accused in a lawsuit of grooming and coercing two child actors, 14 and 7 years old at the time, um, according to them, they participated in sexually explicit skits. Uh, we can get into the details, but it's just setting up Jesselnik for another cancel culture rant, isn't it? Listen, I don't have like a, uh, I don't have, I'm not making a joke out of this. I just saw it like a couple, like last week, I just saw the article. I think it was either trending on Twitter or someone sent it to me, but it was like Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears accused of grooming and molesting siblings. Uh, and I was like, holy shit. Like, I didn't even know they were friends. But I click on the article, read it. And if you don't know what happened, uh, I guess Tiffany Hannish was friends with the woman. They were both going through through divorces and they became friends. And this woman's kids called Tiffany Hannish uh, Aunt Tiff. Aunt Tiffany? Aunt Tiffany? Who knows? Auntie Tiff? I don't remember. I mean, people throw away the aunt and uncle, throw around the aunt and uncle pretty Mm -hmm. loosely. Yeah, but she was close to them. Sometimes it's like you've met them twice and they'll be like, oh yeah, this is aunt. And it's like, okay, calm down with the uncle. When I was a kid, there were all kinds of like, this is your uncle Jeff. And I'm like, I don't, who's he related to? And they're like, oh, he's just your friend, dad's friend. And I'm like, why am I calling him that? I don't need that shit. I don't need this in my life. Um, (laughs) But they, uh, Tiffany, they had like a camp, like a stand-up comedy camp at the Laugh Factory for kids where kids would come and look, learn how to do stand-up. And uh, Tiffany Haddish was always there because I think she did the camp way back in the day. And uh, is, has these kids there and is like, tells the girl, they, there's, a, there's two cases here kind of. There's an older daughter who's like now is like in her 20s but was like young at the time. And uh, during the camp, she's like, oh, I've got a, I've got a perfect commercial for you. And they're like, oh, great. Thinking like, they're going to be stars. And she makes the kid watch a, uh, and I haven't seen this skit. But it was like, a, they make the kid watch a, like a, a skit about, and it's like pe- pe- appropriate age people doing this, where they start um, eating a Subway sandwich and pretending like they're giving head. And then Tiffany's like, all right, now to the girl. She's like, now you do that. Copy what you saw here. So basically the joke is that like a kid is acting all sexual. Right. Now, well, it's like, yeah, an older man, a college age, arguing over a, a sub sandwich before eventually starting to eat the sandwich kind of from either end almost like and then they start moaning and making yeah and the girl's like I didn't like doing that like nobody likes doing that Be acting in some like third rate comedy skits always going to be a bad time I don't care what it is I I um, I don't think this is bad but I didn't haven't seen the skit so I don't know she, the girl was uncomfortable acting is uncomfortable the next one is amazing the next one is that like years later after this first Subway sandwich skit that seemed that somehow wasn't that bad because they let the sun go. They say, we, we have a, a job for your, uh, your, I guess the kid was six at the time, five, six, whatever. Younger, a younger brother. Yeah, yeah younger Seven. brother. They're like, we have a, a bit for him. Have him come do this. And it's Ari Spears from Mad TV and Tiffany Haddish. who was not anybody at the time. But uh, the skit is called Through the Eyes of a, Pe- the eyes of a Pedophile. Or through, yeah, Through, through a the, Pedophile's through Eyes. Through a Pedophile's Eyes. And it's, I mean, it sounds bad. They're like, he's giving a, he's giving a kid in the bath, a back massage. It's, it's just like, he's touching the kid. The kid says he like, can't look at, he can't have his picture taken anymore. He won't let adults touch him. Uh, and I don't know about any of that. What I do know is I have seen the skit. The skit was on Funny or Die for a little while. And then it was on YouTube for a little while. And they got taken down recently. But like anything on the internet, you can find it. And it was, it was brought to my attention pretty quickly. It is... One of the worst skits I've ever seen, not in terms of like, oh my God, but like just in terms of like, I have an idea. I'm going to do it in the most half-assed way possible. Only use a real kid. 
that doesn't add any comedic value, just makes it that much harder to watch. So Tiffany Haddish is like brings her kid. It, she just walks into a house. It all takes place in this one house. Brings the kid and is like, uncle, whatever. I need you to watch this kid while I go run an errand or something. And he's like, sure, I'll watch him. And they start playing the song. The, Ari Spears looks at the kid like, all, like a cartoon like dog looking at a chicken. And they start playing like, my mind's telling me no, but my body. Like this R&B song. And they play the song for like minutes while the kid plays with a train on the floor. And Ari Spears sitting like a foot away from him is holding a newspaper with the eyes cut out so he can look at the kid. And they think this is so funny that they linger on this for, I'm not joking, like at least three minutes of just the, the eye hole joke. And then the kid's in the bath. At one point, he puts uh, baby oil on the kid's back. But it's not as like, gro- like, yeah, it sounds bad. But when you see it, you're just like, you didn't think this sketch through. It doesn't seem like you're actually hurting this kid in any way. And then the skit ends with, uh, with the kid seducing Ari Spears. Like, it's so bad. I can't believe they thought it was funny. It seems like something that like someone in their first day of improv would be like, I'm going to do something edgy here. Let's do through the eyes of a pedophile, not put any thought into writing it, but get an actual kid here. It is terrible. They deserve shame for it. I'm excited to see what happens to them. I think nothing happens to Ari Spears. I think nothing happens to Tiffany Haddish. Maybe they pay some money, but I don't know if, how much what you deserve for this. I think it's, it's not any more humiliating for the kid than acting in a normal scene would have been. I mean, the, the seven-year-old getting massaged down, he says he, he suffers from depression and anxiety, social disorders. That may be, but I don't think it's from this. Like, they're like, he didn't want to, he, at the end of the day, he was like, I didn't like that. Like, no one likes acting. No one likes acting in a bad sketch. Well, Funny or Die Ari released Spears. a statement. They said they found this video absolutely disgusting and would never produce such content. So they were not standing behind Tiffany Haddish. We were not involved in the conceptual conceptualization development funding or production it was uploaded to the site as user generated content and removed immediately after they became uh, aware of it which is true funny or die had a thing where you could add things on people would vote on it they didn't know half the shit that was on there but it is truly terrible if you saw it you would be like what throw this away it's just bad it's not even it's not offensive there are people who are like oh it's kids it's kids like whatever it's it's fine that part's fine but it's terrible it, yeah, it did. It, it seemed very uh, poorly thought out. It's like the you know a sign of uh, being just like unfunny might cost them a lot of money. Although it's not a great sign that the family who's suing um, is being represented by their like older adult daughter. I guess if you got a law- lawyer in the family, but I don't know if she's necessarily a lawyer. I don't know. She's just, I don't know uh, what happens here. It doesn't sound good. But with watching the sketch, I was like, oh my god, what a terrible. I mean, I don't know Ari Spears at all. But it, he thought this was, like, funny. Like, just even a good skit. It's, it's so bad. I Find it and watch it. Because it is just, you're not, it's not a trigger warning situation. It is a, like, the worst comedy you've ever seen situation. Like, Tiffany Haddish has, like, two lines, and she fucks up both of them. Like, it's just like, wh- <laughs> did you just take, did the one take and then get out of here? Like, why did you, did you have to film ten skits in a day? It's truly terrible. It's kind of messy, not, though, that, like, okay, you do the, the subway sub one. Uh, that the girl ends up not liking. It's like this kind of weird sexual vibe. Six, I, I think all these years go by, or may, maybe not, but the next time um, a, another skit comes up, which uh, a sexual situation and kids are involved, Tiffany's like, oh, let's go call the Wilsons. They got another kid. Like, yeah. what? it is a little odd. It is a little odd that they went back to that, that same family. She's hustling. She's like, oh, we need a kid for this? I got a kid. I know a kid will do it. No, but if they had paid a kid, if they had just like done a casting call, I believe parents would have been like, sure, you can use my kid. I've been shocked at what parents will let their kids do if they're stage parents. And there wouldn't have been a lawsuit because they would have paid them. All right. They sound like a, a family who's going through some shit and is looking for a way to get money. I'm not defending them at all. This family deserves all the money they can get. But watch the sketch. It is bonk shit. Reminds me a little bit of um, Louis C.K.'s movie that was never released because uh his scandal i love you daddy i love you daddy popped uh right before it came out and it ended up like reading like a a long confession and was uh was also kind of terrible mm-hmm. we yeah, watched it in your house i watched it several times it was, it was worth seeing worth seeing and indefensible that I think, still hasn't popped up though the, i don't think you can find that on the internet no but i, I bet there's somewhere you can get it because there were screeners out there so someone must have it but i think that the i, I love you daddy is worse is more harmful than uh, through the eyes of a predator. All right, way to start news on a down note. Mm-hmm. All 
If I told you I've got a skit idea, I need to use Walker and Ellis, would you let me? Yes. I can't tell you what the skit idea is. Yeah. Let me have them. Yeah. Okay. That's a good. That's good. I mean, I wouldn't trust Tiffany Haddish now, but I trust your judgment. Um, Jizzy Jewelry. It's a thing. That's, oh. that's what it's called? Oh, but Greg, I'm a square. I'm a basic ass bitch who doesn't even know what Jizzy Jewelry is. Could you explain? Sure. Sure, I could. Uh, just once. J- Jizzy Jewelry is that thing where a jeweler, jeweler, <laughs> really, really getting into my, um, my trouble area there, where a jeweler takes samples of cum, dehydrates it, powders it, and then incorporates it into wearable clay beads or trinkets. Now, I, I did not read this article, but I saw pearl necklaces, the people getting jewelry made from semen and had to talk about it on the, on the show. So it's, they just take, so if I want to get, if you want to get your wife a, like a, a necklace, a jizzy, some jizzy jewelry, you just like, you just masturbate in a cup and then give it to them? Do you do it on site? Like, what's the, what's the deal? Do you- okay, so it's really just one uh, lady, as far as I know. So it, maybe I'm exaggerating how it's sweeping the nation. Uh, but it's this woman named Amanda Booth. She st- started a jewelry business uh, last year on TikTok. And she, she makes, like, wearable stuff out of people's bodily fluids in general. Breast milk. Uh, also cremated remains. Um, I've heard of the cremated remains. Of, of pets and people. Fur. Lock, locks of hair. Stuff like that. What, about, then- what about pee? Didn't mention it. What about poo? But it says bodily fluid, so I would think so. Anyway, someone kind of joked to her on TikTok, like, oh, can we send, you know, jizz in? And then a lot of people did. She's, you know, she's on TikTok with her jewelry business. And uh, and she kind of said, okay, sure, as a joke. Um, and then, like, people were super into it and started sending in uh you know samples and she she gives instructions for how much to send in and she wasn't sure if it would work at first and she's like actually it works great um like the process to like you know turn it into something it almost looks like it's a pearl like a pearl earring you could just be wearing so, jizz on your ear so that's what the jewelry looks like is like a pearl i think so there were some there were some necklaces which made it more look like ivory almost you know she puts it inside of like other other things and yeah but yeah you can be like wearing uh your partner's fluids on you gives new meaning to the term drip <laughs> um okay greg you're a pretty girl of course i am and uh, i'm giving you i'm your i'm your boyfriend i'm giving you uh i'm giving you a necklace okay okay hey baby oh i'm so excited to see what you got me for for my birthday oh i know it's your birthday i got i've been waiting a while for this i've been excited to give it to you i want you to open this okay uh here i go oh this this looks beautiful what is, is this beautiful. made out of <laughs> Someone asked that right away. <laughs> okay, uh, let me try again. Oh, this is this is beautiful. Oh, Put it on. It's, it's so lovely. It's so lovely. Oh, oh, I love this. It's so thoughtful. How did you come up with this idea? It's jizz. <laughs> I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Ex- excuse me. I mean, how is it? Um, what do you even mean? What do you mean? It's jizz. It's edible. It's one of those candy necklaces. <laughs> <laughs> These are not edible. Uh, I think they're. Uh, I think they're. You know, they're made into hard substances. It's dehydrated and powders and like that. Yeah, it's almost like clay, clay beads or trinkets. Uh, I'm not the woman anymore, by the way. <laughs> no. I know you broke character to explain. I, uh, I just wanted to let the people jewelry. know um, that that is um, that would be one way to break up. I think it's. A, I think it's jewelry for an enemy. Like, you wouldn't give this to someone you love. You would give it to someone who, like, your girlfriend cheats on you, give her some jizzy jewelry. You know? Like, I bought this for you before I found out you cheated on me. I just, I don't want to give it to someone else. You take it. Uh, yeah, it is really nice. It does smell a little bit, but enjoy it. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't smell, I think, after they make it. Um, but they did say that the samples stank after being sent in the mail. Yeah. After, you know, it'd been a couple of days. Like, she was like, if it's fresh, if it's fresh, just whatever. It, you know, it's not like it, you wouldn't want to. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to wear it as a perfume, but it's yeah. fine. Uh, but if it's coming in the mail and it's been uh, a couple of days, uh, it's disgusting, and they realize they have to do it at the end of the day because otherwise it'll like stink up their studio for the day. 
Um, Imagine working at that studio and just being like, you, why did you tell people to send us, send us semen? This is the, the end of the day fucking sucks. Can I go home early and not have to go through this, uh, this process? But it's popular, and it's popular because of couples. So several of the clients, this was on vice.com, uh, say that they're kind of part of the uh, BDSM community. Um, you know, say, I, I don't know what that exactly stands for. You, you, you must know. Come on. What are the words? It's like S and M, S and M community essentially, um, and th they would the woman Amanda said she's loosely kind of part of that community, and you know these it's almost like bracelets and stuff that are like collars, so it's almost the mm -hmm. ultimate like you're wearing uh, my nut on your finger, <laughs> or you're wearing you're wearing me on you at all times. It's like it's almost sort of like a power move. Totally, I, and I get that. That makes sense. If you were like, this community is, has embraced this, they're into it, yes. Uh, does it sound like a good idea? No. Will I be getting it for my family? You bet. <laughs> uh, she also says she, she needs a lot, like a few teaspoons. Um, to at least a teaspoon to make the right clay to come ratio, but more is better. Uh, and she says like, like sex a couple times, couple masturbations. I don't know if that like a different amount, but I guess that's four times total, like to have enough to ship out. And the couples were like, it puts a little extra charge uh, in the, in the, in the yeah. making of it, you yeah. know? You're getting a necklace. It's like making a baby, You're but You're getting hotter. some earrings. You're getting a belt, bitch. It sounds great. I wish there was something that women could give men, you know. Could you use could you do this with blood? They say any fluid, I don't know. Um, so I think if you did a, like a like a combo, you know, if it's a, a semen and blood necklace and it's not weird. If it's just semen, it's like what's your problem? But semen and blood, all right. That's what they say. In the jewelry business. <laughs> it's it's uh it's romantic, I guess. That's what a lot of the uh a lot of the people are putting on saying, what if, saying it is romantic. What if that was the new JRVP merch? <laughs> was the, we, we sell necklaces and you don't know which one you're going to get. Is it a Greg necklace or an Anthony necklace? You don't know until it shows up. Greg's is white. Mine's black. I mean, I would just be afraid that it'd be too popular. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just like. Oh, we'd never get anything done. <laughs> it's like, it's dad, what are you doing in there? I'm just working. I'm making necklaces. <laughs> I'm making jewelry. No, you can't wear it. That would be fucked up. If you tell your kids wearing it. <laughs> what? I mean, uh, yeah, it would take it would take a lot of work. Is it expensive? I gotta think it's custom made jewelry. I mean, you're contributing to it. Um, mm -hmm. That part's free. Uh, I would think it's uh, expensive, but I don't know. Check out. Uh, Is it cheaper just to get a, like a regular necklace and just masturbate on it and be like, here, wear this? <laughs> Absolutely, but it's not there for for good. I mean, I guess. I guess it would, you know, it'd probably smell for forever. I don't I think once it's dried and it's on there, it doesn't smell. I don't know. You want to try, try it out for next week? Uh, you know, I was a sperm donor wearable, once. Wearable, you know, jizzy jewelry challenge. I was a sperm donor once and it's, it, the amount of times you have to do it and what you have to do is not worth it. No way. That, that is another part of the article. By the way, this was like a long form. This was the longest article that we've ever talked about. I, was, I just was like, I, I guess I got to get to the end here. I mean, even skimming, it was, it was a lot. But yeah, people were saying that. It's a lot of work. Um, some people are good at getting in the jar right off the bat. And some people are saying like, it took a lot. It took a, not only to fill up the jar, but just like you miss sometimes or you don't get the right... I don't know, or it doesn't get the right, uh, you know, some of it just dribbles off to the side. Who knows? You got to get, you know, not everyone can be uh, Steph Curry out there from the three-point line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be Steph Curry constantly masturbating in the jars perfectly. Don't get this for people. Unless we sell it as merch, then, then knock yourself out. Hmm. <laughs> All right, this next one really tickles Anthony's sweet spot. It's about an auction in New Zealand where a family bought two suitcases uh, at an auction of abandoned property, which I guess is a thing. When they opened the suitcases at home, though, uh, the family strangely found that inside those suitcases were two slightly smaller suitcases. And then inside those two slightly smaller suitcases were... The bodies of two dead children. 
I mean, this is incredible to me. And I've read the article hoping to find out like what happened. You know what I mean? What, because I, my first thought was the kids were playing hide and go seek and it went wrong. Like they got locked oh. in suitcases and died. <laughs> and then I was like, are they siblings? What, I, I'm not making a joke. That's what I really thought was going to happen. Then I'm like, oh, after reading, they give so few details. Someone killed these kids and put them in suitcases. Mm -hmm. But why, if you're, if you're going through an estate and it must be nice right. to be on your deathbed and know that you didn't get caught for the kids you put in suitcases and left in your house. You know what I mean? Be like, oh, I can't believe I made it. I thought for sure I was going to get caught my whole life. And now I'm dying knowing it's someone else's problem. It's whoever wins the auction. It's their problem now. I want to know. Well, why do you assume that person's dead? In fact, I do have a follow-up to this story. Because if there's an auction for it, I assume it was like an estate sale where someone died in their house. And no. They, so, oh, it was in a storage locker. It was in a storage locker. Apparently, this is New Zealand. I don't know if it's different in different countries. New Zealand's yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> they, they put kids in, in suitcases all the time. Yeah, it's, man. I mean, I was imagining the... And I'll get to a second part of the story. I found a more a recent update to it. But I was just imagining the family... And apparently they were all there, like the parents, and they, they were like they were opening it for the big suitcase unveiling. Did they think? Did they think they just got suitcases? I, they were just or at home. They... they were all home. Yeah, they just thought they got suitcases. So what did they? Well, go... it didn't say there's a special surprise inside. Yeah, but I'm saying they're heavy as this fuck. Isn't a you fucking, got, you got uh, dead kids pop. in there. It's, it's like, gonna be oh. heavier than an empty suitcase. No one thought. No one in the when you brought it to the auction, you weren't like, should I open the suitcase to see if there's anything inside that we might get more money for at the auction or way less money? No. Let's just throw it up there as is. Do you expect to find something in the suitcase? Like in Storage Wars, when you bid on a, a locker and you get to keep whatever's inside. Were they hoping there were like prizes in there? Something fun for the kids? I mean, it's not like a, it's not like a Cracker Jack box. Well, then why do you have your whole family waiting around for you to open <laughs> well, up that, I, I might be embellishing. All I know is that the family were all home at that time at the very least. And now they want like counseling because they're scarred from it. I, I think they're suing and, and all this stuff. Like they're, they're, they they're want counseling? They should want new suitcases. <laughs> I want one that's coated, covered in plastic so I know there's no kids in there. I mean, I, I don't think the expectation is there's stuff inside of it. I don't know if the bodies of two dead children, the bones, you would think, yeah, they would be pretty heavy. It was I, They weren't recently dead. They, they thought they had been dead, uh, according to uh, the coroners, for years. I think over five years. So the, at that point, yeah, they, they still would weigh plenty. You're right. Um, Enough that you would think something's in here. Someone should check at some point before they go to the house. Basically, they were, they were there for years. They, they, at that point, they assumed it's abandoned, and then they just sold it. Yeah. First of all, yeah, don't buy suitcases at the abandoned property auction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, how nice are these suitcases that they would even be worth buying? They or were they like, like $5? They, did it only cost $5? And it's just something almost for people that you know, don't have the means and it's like yeah. almost a nicer goodwill. I think they were both. I mean, it's like if you're, if you, if you're poor enough that you need to get suitcases for like a dollar from an estate sale, but you're rich enough to travel, maybe this is for you. I assume they were more like trunks, like something that would be, last a long time. It's yeah. not just some fucking, uh, some, some little, uh, you know, carry on. So you ready for the update? The yes. Story? I want to know. I want to know. I want to know all the details. They did some DNA work, uh, and they found a woman believed to be the mother of the children who were found dead. Um, they found this woman now in South Korea um, who had a past address in New Zealand that was registered to that storage unit where the suitcases were kept for years. So she sounds like a suspect. They didn't say that, but it, you know, it sounds like mama might have killed the kids put them in the suitcases and then put them in the storage uh, facility and then moved back to uh, South Korea where she was from. Okay. So they didn't like talk to her. They were just like, we, we think it's her. If you, I, if you guys see her. The, new, the news hasn't updated the story. No, yeah, no, they got her. They, they found her. And okay. I think it's, it's, being, uh, it's, an inve it's an ongoing investigation. They didn't even say that she was necessarily named the suspect, but I'm putting two and two together, that they went all the way to South Korea and found this woman. It who could have been. Was, it was registered to her. The suitcases were registered to her. And I think the children were her children. So I think they're her children. Maybe it was a boyfriend who did it. You know, maybe something else. That maybe they fell and she didn't know what to do. So just put them in suitcases. Maybe she poisoned them. I want to know details. There's so many different ways this can go, and they're all fun. I mean, I think if you're, <laughs> if you put 
the bodies of dead children into a storage facility that you register in New Zealand and then move back to South Korea. I'm going to say you killed those kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a pretty safe bet. But you may have had help, you know? That's why cut them up, chop them up, grind them up. Put them in the ground. Why are you put them in suitcases so they can? It's like a, a nice surprise for later on. But yeah, open your suitcases. What the fuck's wrong with you? If I bought you suitcases, I would be like a family. Go in another room. I'm gonna go on the balcony here and open them up and see if there's anything inside. Anthony's a sociopath. I appreciate a good deal. <laughs> I wish we had an ad for away today. Mm. <laughs> uh, we do have a story, uh, you know, about the airline industry close it's about a southwest airlines pilot uh who recently was piloting a plane to cabo san lucas mexico uh threatened to turn the plane around uh and involve security but let's let's listen in we're gonna try something here i'm gonna play something off my computer straight from the internet let's see how it goes so here's the deal this continues while we're on the ground i'm gonna have to pull back to the gate Everybody's gonna have to get off. We're gonna have to get security involved, oh, and it's God. vacation that's gonna be ruined. So, you folks, whatever that airdrop thing is, quit sending naked pictures. Let's get yourself to Cabo. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't believe he had to do this. I love that he had to do it because this has been a thing for a little while. Everyone's on a plane. I saw a video where a guy, like the woman's taking the video, and she's like, someone airdropped their penis to people. And I know it was this guy. I don't know how she knew it was him. I assume like, maybe she saw him doing it and then told the flight attendant and he was taken off the plane and arrested. And he tries to, when she's like, what were you doing? He was like, I was just having some fun. That was his exact quote is, I was just having <laughs> some fun. That, like, the embarrassment of getting caught is why I would never do this. Uh, on That's plane. it? That's the only thing? Not yeah, like it's, a, a, it's a funny prank to airdrop like 40 people on a plane? It is not a funny prank. It's, it's sexual yes. harassment and no. sexual assault on yes. some level. If it's your own penis. But if it's like if it's something like a funny picture. Well, no one knows if it's your own penis or not. Of course, take the sex out of it. It's funny to airdrop an image, okay. like a weird image to a plane full of people. And everyone's like, what the fuck? But now everyone knows what it is now. And now it's harassment. And again, I'm not talking about penises. I mean, if it was like a funny, like SpongeBob meme. Yeah, I guess that's, that's, that's I'm not a talking about different. PPs and wee wees. Okay. I'm talking about SpongeBob memes. Uh, but I get, I get the, the prankness of it. Of I'm just going to airdrop everyone. Everyone's got to deal with this. And I'll just be like, oh, what happened? But now people are getting caught. That I, what fascinates, fascinates me about this is that people are doing it back and forth to each other. That it's like multiple people on the plane that now everyone knows about this. So somebody gets an airdrop and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this too. And then just start doing it. Because it's like people are sending naked pictures. It's multiple people on, on this flight doing it. Really? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that clip you heard was, was sort of halfway through. Obviously, someone heard him really talking about all the airdropping and then, then started re recording. But yeah, before that, he, he had made it clear that these explicit images are going back and forth, and someone had complained to, uh, to a flight attendant, and uh, that's how it sort of all started, and, and the pilot realized it. I have uh, noticed that in airports, and I don't know if on the plane, but certainly in airports where you just like get uh, an airdrop out of nowhere. <laughs> how did I'm not even hooked up to the internet. How did I get this? I'm going to accept it, Aaron. Let's see what happens. Let's see if you got to look for a new job. Aaron just sent me a photo. This is great podcasting, you know? It's great podcasting. It might be. Let's see what Aaron did. I'm not, I don't know. I said accept it to photos, and now I can't see I don't see it. I, I, um, and that is what Aaron... I was surprised about how many people... Yeah, tell me if it pops up, but how many people said that this has happened to? 53% uh, of women between the ages of 18 and 29 have reported being sent unsolicited, obscene images uh in airdrop that's obviously not all on um planes or anything but that's like most women now are encountering this but you can't just hit like women only and hit and an airdrop i don't think i've never airdropped anything in my life but i assume you have to just do everyone around you yes no well no aaron can, what did you, you can me? absolutely target it aaron just did it to you and i hope you uh i can't but i, I can't hope you feel it. victimized is your phone open oh I, I did it on my computer oh okay this guy. It's just a photo of my dog like, wearing a happy birthday glasses. Uh, that, maybe that's what you call it, but it looks like a dick to me. <laughs> um, it's called cyber flashing, by the way. That's mm. the, that's the official term. Yeah, I, I get the I get the uh, I get what's funny about it, but it is obviously super gross. I don't understand why you're on a plane with your plane with your phone not on airplane mode. I guess when you're sitting at the we gate, just you're got like, there. 
I would yes, you can absolutely target where you're you know trying to send people. Different people just pop up, and you can tell if mm, they're, they're women okay. or, or men or whatever. Oh, okay, I see. I see. So you can let you just see. You're not just like send everyone around. Someone's me. there like, in okay. the area. I'll, that's has that happened to you walking in airports? It's actually been this year lately where you'll just get an airdrop request and i i'm like are they somehow spamming everyone is it i've never you know accepted it because i'm not really trying to live that dangerous life i just assume it's going to like steal all my information but or some bullshit yeah i wouldn't accept that i remember being on an airplane maybe i'm missing out i was flying virgin air like a long time ago and they had a thing where you had like a it was like state of the art at the time where you had a computer in front of you you could like you could order snacks to your seat instead of them coming down the aisle you could order movies there and there was a thing where you could tap on the, the map of the plane and get like tip like 13A and uh, request to talk to them. And it was, no one ever used it. But one day someone was like, like seat like 12B wants to talk to you. And I was terrified. I was terrified of someone like, what if I hit yes and I'm in a conversation with someone, they know where I'm sitting, that it seems so, uh, so awful that I, co- I couldn't imagine doing it. I remember that was like a thing on airplane. They still sort of maybe have it on some international flights, but like... I can't imagine a technology that probably took more work that was used less. No one mm-hmm. is ever doing the texting through the, through the uh, thing. No, no. But airdropping, Bullshit. airdropping to me, I do think it is kind of funny. I think it's bad, and I, I like when what people is get this? caught. You're, you're like, um, this is the weirdest Anthony take ever. It's funny to airdrop. It's like, hey, Deshaun Watson. It's like they were asking for it. It's, it's like that's not. That's what you're. You're, you're thinking going. of all your colleagues. I. Um, <laughs> No, I think it is, it's funny to make, to like, just send a random picture to a group of people, take, take sex out of it. If you're sending your penis, if it's these like gross dudes sending penis pics, that's obviously fucked up. I wouldn't want to get one, but right. I've never, I would never in the position, but, but I think it's funny that people would be like, oh, a gross penis pic. Let me send one back. Everyone's got nudes on the phone. People are just sending it around. Nudes mean nothing anymore. Clothes are going to be obsolete. It's going to be semen necklaces, and that's it. That's why you got to get your JRVP merch mm-hmm. while they're still in style. Mm-hmm. I'll put semen on it. Last headline. Finally, a, a story of a pastor who keeps it real. Uh, maybe a little too real. You know, there's some pastors and preachers who kind of use their position of power to kind of milk their congregants, you know, for their money. But they do it, you know, for their own personal profit, but they, they sort of do it subtly or they try to hide it. There was uh, this guy in Kansas City last week who just, he's very much out in the open for it. Let's uh, listen in to our, our buddy. See, that's how I know you're still poor, broke, busted, and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. <laughs> now he, he pauses here just because for effect. Build, I'm not worth your McDonald's money. Come on! Come on! I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. I ain't worth your St. John knit. Y'all can't afford it no how. <laughs> That's my name. I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. I ain't worth your Prada. I'm not worth your Gucci. All right, we'll stop it there. <laughs> my my favorite line. I read the article. My favorite line was, "Y'all know I asked for the. You know I asked. Y'all know I asked for one last year." Here it is all the way in August, and I still ain't got it. <laughs> yeah, that's where he got to it. That's Eventually, we would have gotten there. It took a while. Um, that part is amazing. It's kind of like, um, you know, you put a wish list. Like, the God Kids could put, a, like, a wish list mm-hmm. up on uh, Amazon of what you could get them for Christmas. That's what he did with his Movado watch. He really did. It was on Amazon, or was it on? Because I remember he was like, you know what's at? It's at Sam's Club. <laughs> like, it's in the Sam's Club. You could, you got, I'm, I'm making it easy for you guys to buy me this watch. Yeah, you pointed out there was this Movada watch you really wanted. You can get it at Sam's Club, uh, and he still ain't got it. I like that. I mean, <laughs> for, for, a, for a pastor to ask for a watch is funny to me, all right? But then to be like, <laughs> it's been months. I haven't gotten the watch. Got to give a sermon about it. Like, to keep going, to keep giving different examples. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. Like, okay. Like I said, that always felt Red like a Lobster. Shot. Okay. E- all of them. Everyone. No, I'm not worth your Prada money. And I thought people, when I heard this before, I thought it was people screaming, like, stop this. But I they're like, was, yeah. I they're think like, there preach. was one person that was like, come on, you know. Uh, but you're right. Some others were like, preach. Uh, it was not a popular sentiment, though. He has spent the last week, like, apologizing like hell to, uh, to his congregants and, and what different is his people. Excuse? He's taken a lot of. There was no. I mean, what, what, what could be this? The well, excuse? he's just like it was out of context because the fact that it got no. recorded and, and went viral is what's, what everyone's upset about. No, he's just apologizing because he's saying like, 
uh, I, I lost my way and I, you know, I shouldn't have done this. I, you know, I, I shouldn't be asking people uh, for their hard earned money. Like he's basically just saying like, oops, my bad. And did he, so he just put it on a wish list and then was mad that no, no I don't one really did think it. he put it Or you think he asked list. during a sermon, like, I want this watch. Yeah. It's at Sam's Club. If you guys want to get me a watch for Christmas, this is what I'd like. I mean, it's September. Uh, he brought it up in August. I assume it's not last August. Uh, and that would have been a year <laughs> uh, before he would call them cheap, busted, and disgusted. So I think, like, you know, he waited a few weeks. Uh, he wasn't getting shit. And uh, so he brought it back up again. It's so funny. It's so funny they thought there would be any other result other than it going viral and him having to apologize profusely. People being like, oh, we're so sorry. And is a Movada watch, like, is that, I assume it's very expensive. How much does it cost? Did it say? It did not say. I'm going to check it out. There's some free advertising for uh, Movada watches. Uh, I mean, they retail up to uh, very expensive, but I think the lower models are like 400 bucks. You got 700 bucks. It's not too crazy. He must have been asking for a crazy one. It wouldn't be for, he wouldn't be doing this over 400 bucks. And they probably would have gotten it for him. I mean, he's, he's talking red lobster and money. Did he want people to like all chip in money and then get the watch or one person just step I up? I think he just wanted it. someone to bring that, him, that Movada. He's working you know, for it. Have you, like, when I went to church as a kid, they had two collections. There was one and when I was like, why two? And they're like, oh, one's for the church and one is for like some other, they tell you what, it is, what it's for, something they donate to. And I was like, well, which one's which? Wh- which one do you give more money to? Why not just have the church do all this? It's always weird when they ask for money that to be screaming specifically for a specific watch is great. And it, wh- but it's also like totally part of, it's uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, it's totally part of what a lot of churches are like now. I mean, the prosperity gospel is sort of a, a, the most famous one of it, where, where it's all about like enriching uh, the most popular preachers there are. Like Joel Osteen, all those guys oh, are yeah. essentially doing the same version. Yeah. They're just a little more subtle. Well, they ask for money and they start buying themselves stuff and they just show up with it. They don't say, we need you to buy this. They just to buy the private jet. jet. Yeah. They don't say, go, you guys get the jet and bring it to me. That's like an extra <laughs> level. But anyone who's giving this much money to the church uh, or these churches where they're always asking for stuff, do you deserve it? Yeah. And I would he, be like... If you don't get it to him, I mean, he probably has a point. They are poor, broke, busted, and disgusted. Okay, you're the, Greg, you're the preacher. I'm a, I'm a congregant. Hey, uh, I know, you know, you, you got kind of embarrassed by asking for that watch, but I, I got you something. What, what did you... Oh, finally. Is it that Movado watch then? Open it up. Oh. It's, oh. A, it's a necklace. What is... What is it? Okay. It's I mean, necklace. I'll take it. It's custom it. made. Put it on. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. I had it made in the shape of a crucifix. Oh, thank you. It's the thought that counts. I mean, I'd still like that watch, but uh, this is beautiful. This is better than a watch. Why? Why Why is it better? Because you always know what time it is. Oh, okay. I mean, Semen time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and now it's time for... Choo-choo. <laughs> Recommendations. Station. I like he immediately knew that that semen time just meant it's uh, made with semen. <laughs> uh, I will uh, <laughs> I will recommend a book this week, uh, a book that for some reason I was convinced Anthony had recommended in the past, and he hasn't. And that's why I'm even more excited to recommend Say Nothing, uh, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. It's by Patrick Rodden Keefe. Uh, it was one of the most uh, widely read and talked about books from a couple of years ago. It's a story of the Troubles um, in, in Ireland and Northern Ireland as, as told through uh, a few threads. You know the Troubles, right? I didn't know shit is this, about is the this Troubles. Non-fiction Basically, Civil fiction? War. It's narrative nonfiction. It's nonfiction, but it is as like novelistic a nonfiction book as almost I've ever read. He's so he's so good at tying it all together. And it sort of starts um, with an abduction, like a mother that went missing, and then it, it goes through all these different threads, um, including like an IRA agent uh, involved in, in a huge London bombing um, at 19 years old with her sister, and she becomes you know one of the most famous like hunger strike uh, people ever. And then ultimately the leaders of the IRA, almost the beginning of this new version of the IRA and these bombings and how it was connected to all the, this abduction. And I didn't know shit about it. And it's such recent history, but it like the way he wrote it, I just can't like imagine uh, a story being told better. And I got a lot smarter just like about everything. And it was all happening not that long ago. So uh, say nothing, a true story 
of uh, Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. It's by uh, Patrick Radden Keefe. I, and I almost feel like if you're interested in topic, I recommended Milkman a few years ago, which was a novel, and it's totally different. Uh, but if you like read those two books, I feel like it's like attacking uh, the stories in a totally different way, uh, but they're both awesome. What if you read The Mil- Milkman, which I read uh, a couple years ago, um, Say Nothing and Eat Lucky Charms at the same time? <laughs> The magically delicious. That's right. Uh, I'm recommending a book this week. It's, it's going to be available for pre-order, everybody. Uh, this is a pre-order book. It's coming out in January. Uh, but I, I'm, I can't, can't control myself. I'm too excited. I'm going to need you. I don't need a Movada watch. I don't need you to buy my semen jewelry. All I need you to do is go on, go on and go online and pre-order. Go to your bookstore and pre-order The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. He hasn't written a novel in quite some time. I uh, had a book of essays a few years ago. I think his last novel was Imperial Bedrooms. Uh, this is a great, it's fantastic. On his podcast, he has a, P- a Patreon podcast where he would read uh, like a serialized version of this novel. Uh, for, he did it for a long, long time. And now he's collected it, which I was hoping he would do the whole time. And, uh, you know, if you've read Brett Easton Ellis, his first book, Less Than Zero, takes place, it's a college students, uh, recent college students. Um, uh, what's it called? Rules um, of Attraction. Rules of Attraction is in college, full, full blown. American Psycho is like late twenties, uh, investment bankers, uh, Wall Street guys, um, and it keeps getting older. But this is going back to high school. These are high school seniors. Uh, Brett Easton Ellis is the main character, talking about a, uh, a serial killer who's attacking Los Angeles in the eighties. It's like a very like I've lent it to a friend of mine who's like he grew up in L.A. He's like this makes me nostalgic for when I grew up. It just feels very like high school running around L.A. Uh, fast book if you read um once upon a time in bennington college a lot of those autobiograph autobiographical fa- facts in that podcast are in here that i just i loved it it mm-hmm. was like reading his like diary in high school it's very long it's kind of a hangout novel you just like spending time with these characters and seeing how uh, it all goes wrong i loved it it was my i loved it more than i've read uh, loved his last three or four books um but uh so but if you're a shards, less than zero fan especially less than zero fan glamorama fan american psycho fan these book uh, um rules of attraction this book is for you it seemed like an amazing beach read i'm, I'm surprised it's coming out in january and not like june because it would be a great uh, book to read in the beach it's fascinating uh, a lot of interesting shit happens it's young people having sex which is always fun to read about and watch and make jewelry out of uh the shards brett easton ellis pre-order it now it'll be out in january You're pushing it hard and, uh i loved it and um, and I don't get a lot of like advanced books that I want badly, uh, like this one. But it's fantastic, and I'll talk about it again uh, early next year. But I was I was psyched about it, and it uh, it lives up to the hype. I uh, I truly truly enjoyed uh, mm. reading every second of it. We need we need like um, some sort of way to like make it an extra recommendation. I feel like this one you're like you really mean it. I really meant mine too today. You know what I'm saying? I, I would give the bonus, you know, to to that. You know, I guess people can just read between the lines. You're just looking at me like, why? Well, I think that, that you're trying to say like sometimes you recommend things you don't really give a shit. You're just trying no, to it's just emotions. like levels. I, you recommend it, you really like it, or like you really, really, really like it. Like, I always really, I, I read books all the time that I don't recommend because I'm like, it's not. I wouldn't recommend this. It's not yeah. good enough. I don't. I'm not mad. I read it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But when you, when we're very excited, you can tell. I think it's true. The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis got nothing to do with Ireland, and that was. <laughs> Recommendation station. Walker, get us the F.O., you little butthole. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly, for Tonto, that's a spicy meatball. 